Hey everyone, got a new video for you today, a really fun one. This one's a lot more on the mechanical side than the electrical side, but mechanical has a lot to do with automation, so I guess it fits pretty well. Uh, what I've got today is a, a transmission. It's a transmission out of a lawnmower, an old lawnmower that I had laying around in the barn for a long time. We've probably all got something like this laying around in the barn or the shop. Uh, and I cut the bottom of it open just to see what it looked like inside. What are the gears actually doing? I've mean, known for a long time that transmissions have gears. You shift a transmission, there's gears inside, and it, it's called a transmission, so it transmits the power from the engine to something else. Now this particular one, as is the case in most lawnmowers, they're pretty simple in operation. It's not nearly as complex as you'd find in your normal, uh, normal vehicle, uh, but it's really cool because it actually allows us to see inside and, and understand it a little bit better. If you cracked open a real transmission, it would probably get complicated, really complicated, really fast. So this is kind of a mix between a transmission which shifts the gears forward, reverse, first gear, second gear, third gear, uh, and then on some vehicles, mostly rear wheel drive vehicles, that will go through a drive shaft all the way to the back wheels to a differential, which then turns it from going in a straight line to the back of the vehicle and separates it off to the two back wheels. This is a transmission in the sense of it shifts gears, uh, but it's also a differential kind of all in one. Now, before I take it apart, I'm gonna take it apart so we can see all the stuff inside and then show what it looks like, but this is kind of the general sense of it and the bottom of it, I, like I said, has been uh, milled off so that we can see inside of it. Now, normally a transmission is never gonna have a cutaway view because it's gonna be filled with either some kind of grease like a really thick axle grease for a manual transmission, or it's gonna be filled with automatic transmission fluid. So really, really bad if it gets any sort of hole in it. But for our, our sake of being able to, to see what's going on inside of it, of course we want it to be cut open. So that's half the fun of it. So here's a little bit of a view of what that looks like when it's completely assembled. So uh, let me go ahead and disassemble it and let's check out what those gears look like inside. So we're gonna take this thing apart one little bit at a time. First of all, this is the bottom of the transmission. Now, if we flip it over, the top of the transmission is ha has this piece sticking out. This is a splined shaft, and that's attached to a pulley that comes directly from the output of the engine. So this transmission does not have gears in the sense of shifting from first gear, second gear, third gear. It's simply driven straight off of the engine, and to go faster, we just make the engine RPM go up or slower go down. It does have a forward and reverse. So let's go ahead and take this. Again, this is the bottom of the transmission, and this part has been milled off on my dad's milling machine. We went over to his house a couple of days ago and set this up and milled this off. Really fun project. Um, but let me take this off very carefully, and we'll see what this looks like inside. Now there's three main pieces here. This first one, starting from the top going to the bottom, this first part is a sliding mechanism that's attached to the steering column by two steel cables, and that shifts it from forward to reverse. That's really the only shifting that this transmission is able to do. Again, since there's no first, second, third gears, only forward and reverse. Now there's a middle position, and we can see this little disc here, uh, and we'll take this apart in a second so you can see what the disc looks like. But when we shift forward, middle, backward, there's three different positions that allow this to shift from forward to reverse or to be in a neutral intermediate position. So if I take that off, here's what that fork looks like that's stuck around this, uh, this disc here. And I'll take this off. And this is what that piece looks like, that piece that does the actual shifting from forward to reverse. Now in here, this is the shaft that comes directly from the engine itself. And this type of gear is called a bevel gear. You can see that it's, uh, the teeth are cut at an angle along the outside edge of that gear. Inside, two other gears with the, the, a matching angle, these are called bevel gears, and neither of both of these are never going to be engaged at the same time. What happens is this piece in the center has a set of circular holes around it, and this is the only piece that actually grips and turns the axle. Neither of these two gears themselves, either this gear or this gear, we can see that those are rounded in the center. They don't actually turn the shaft. They freely spin, both of them. It's only the disc in the center, this piece, that actually grabs onto the axle and turns it. But there's a whole array of holes around the outside of it. Each one of these two, even though they freely spin, they have two, uh, two pins that stick out through it and actually mesh 
with the holes that are around the outside of that spline disc. So if we push it up against this spline disc, now it's going to engage with this gear and begin rotating one direction. On the other hand, if we shift it the other direction, it will begin meshing with this other gear and begin rotating in the opposite direction. But no matter which way it's rotating, only this disc in the center is the one that actually spins the axle itself. Now attached to that is what they call a spur gear. A spur gear, and this is actually part of the axle itself. It cannot spin around the axle because it's attached to it. This is a spur gear which does not have any angle cut in the teeth. They're straight across the axle so that they can mesh with the larger gear. This is a set of, they, they call them spur gears. So let me reassemble this and put this piece back on. Set this back in so that both of those bevel gears mesh with the gear underneath. So I can spin the gear, the input gear from the, from the engine itself and depending on where this disc is meshed, that will change. It, some of it doesn't quite mesh until all the, the case is all put back together. So we'll put that back together in just a second and show you a little bit more difficult when everything's all loose. Um, but as this disc moves back and forth on this axle, it will grip either one of the bevel gears or it'll stay in the center in a neutral position. Now this spur gear attaches to the other spur gear on the main drive axle that's attached to the two wheels and whenever one of these gears is engaged it causes the main shaft to spin and that causes the axle to rotate. So that's kind of what this thing looks like inside. I'm going to reassemble it uh, and put the case back together so we can spin that axle and the input axle and look at the inside and see what's going on. So let me button it back together and then we'll take a look at the whole thing in operation. Okay, so now we're all reassembled and we can see the gears that are shown through the top of the transmission. So let's take a look at what happens when we start spinning the original input axle that comes from the engine and see what happens with the gears inside while we begin shifting it. So as the engine spins, it spins a pulley which is attached to the axle on the back that you saw earlier and it causes the piece inside to that bevel gear to cause the two bevel gears on the side to rotate. Now as the shift lever up here is moved into the three positions, forward, reverse, and neutral, we can see that in one position, it causes the motor to spin, causing that spur gear to rotate in a particular direction. Now, if we shift it back the other direction, as soon as the motor engages, that spur gear shifts in the opposite direction. I'll continue spinning it while I shift it into neutral. Now you can see that in neutral, you don't get any spin direction at all. In fact, it's quite easy to rotate that spur gear. As soon as it engages, however, it becomes a whole lot more difficult. I, I still can rotate it, but it's a whole lot harder, especially if that engine is still attached to it. Right now, the engine isn't even attached. So as hard as it is now, it would get a whole lot harder if that engine was attached. So if you ever want to push your lawnmower, make sure that it's in neutral and it's really easy to spin. So in one gear, we get to shift, and then shifting into neutral, and then reverse. Now here's something interesting. Right now I have it pulled all the way, as if you're on the shift column, pulling it, trying to engage it in one direction, but it's not fully engaged yet. I have to give it a little bit of a spin until finally it locks into gear. And that's why sometimes when you shift, you have the, it seems to like kind of lurch forward a little bit before it finally grabs and locks into place. That's because those pins might not be aligned with that little disc that has those holes around it. It may not be perfectly aligned right when you shift it, but it, all it takes is just a little bit of motion and then finally it'll engage and it'll allow it to rotate. Now you might ask, why is it making so much noise? Transmissions shouldn't make that much noise. Well, you're right. They shouldn't make that much noise because normally it's filled with this really thick axle grease and some of it's still on my hands. I can still smell the solvent. Um, when I was over at dad's shop, he's got the milling machine, the solvent tank. So big shout out to his help for all of the projects that I'm constantly working on. Uh, but we were able to get it somewhat cleaned up, but normally this is so full of grease 
that it quiets the noise, dissipates some of the heat, and overall makes it last a whole lot longer. Make sure that if you want to do proper maintenance on a transmission, you put the right kind of grease in and that you make sure that it's always got the right amount of grease in it. I hope you found this video really interesting. I sure thought it was interesting. I always love tearing apart something electrical, but mechanical stuff is really cool too. Uh, engines, transmissions, all those kind of systems are just fascinating to look at. If you've got any questions or any suggestions of other things that you want me to tear apart and look at, let me know and I'll uh, see what I can do. Uh, but as always, go build something awesome. Have a great day.